What did the computer say to the other after a 16-hour car ride? Damn, that was a hard drive. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> computer jokes, that's where we're at. Welcome to Beer, Revo- Beer Review Thursday. It is May 6th here on Bros, Bumps, and Beers. I am the EST of Triple B Pack Gagne. We got Matt Two T's Gagne. We got the Jackhammer Jordan Schofield. And we got North End James. Nedge. Nedge. Let's Nedge. go. It's catching on. Who actually, actually, fun fact, I forgot to bring this up on Tuesday. Nedge, actually my mother-in-law's favorite character on Bros, Bumps, and Beers. It didn't take long. <laughs> Big fan following. Hold on, hold on. Two of her sons are on the podcast, and her favorite character is someone not. Well, she's not. You're you're not her son. Mother-in-law, Matt. Mother-in-law. Oh, mother-in-law. Yeah. I heard mother. Yeah. We're recording right now, and actually, my father is actually trying to video call me. So that's great. <laughs> he knows we record on Sundays, but that's okay. Um. So, anyways, hey guys, I got. I don't. I don't. Wanna, I, don't I, wanna, I wanna start with this. It. I'm just gonna jump right in. Um. Jordan, I got a question for you. How long have we been in a pandemic? March 15th, 2020 was the, uh, the first, well, that was the day I wasn't allowed to go to work anymore. So, so just over a year? Know, a month and a, or a year and a half. Yeah. But no, a um, year and a half a month. Sure. James, uh, I got a question for you now. Uh, yeah. Is it hard to read signs? Pardon? Is it hard to read signs? No. Why? No. If you can see, it's not hard, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here's what happened. Um, I hate to be that guy that always brings up grocery stores. Oh God. Another grocery store. No, this is, this is, this is beyond, this is beyond me. Okay. So I'm standing in line, big lineup to get grocery, to, to pay for groceries. Safeway, Marion, let's figure it out. All right. So we got the line. I'm standing in line for five minutes. There's this woman who has three, four items. All of a sudden jumps the line and jumps into a register line. And the, the, the very kind cashier looks at her and goes, um, Actually, you have to stay. You have to go in the line, back in the line over there. And she goes, "Oh, really? Strike one. There's a line. Know that there's a line." And then she goes, "Oh, can I just keep going?" She looks back at me because I'm first line. She goes, "Do you mind if I cut you?" Matt, question for you: yeah. How do you feel about line cutters? Well, I teach elementary school, so I hate them. I hate them with a passion. Would you say that they are? One of the scums of the earth. I'll say it. There it is. I mean, I'm not going to say that because I'm talking about kids now, but. But adult, yeah, they are scum adult of the line earth. cutters are scum of the earth. And I go, no, please get in the back of the line. She's like, I didn't even know this was a rule. Since when is this a rule in grocery stores? Lines? Lines? Lines have always <laughs> been a grocery store, store rule. That's no, all no, I got to say. They are society rule. Society has created lines for a reason. So this woman has basically a- announced to the world that for over a year, she has not stepped foot in a grocery store. I don't want to call her a liar, but she's a liar. I, I don't. I, I don't know if the pandemic is the cause of lines in grocery stores. I mean, <laughs> there's been lines in grocery stores since the dawn of grocery stores. So I would dare dare say that lines got they were worse pre-pandemic, weren't they? No. What? Well, I, <laughs> I don't know. Come to a superstore on McPhillips, and you can see the apocalypse every day. They literally advertise having every line open at superstores on weekends or every checkout because of lines. So yeah, it's, it was a thing. It is a thing. This woman was totally oblivious. And then she stared me down as she's walking to the back of the very long line that I stood in line for five minutes with. I hope you mad dog the shit out of her. Did she give you the walk and uh, stare like a, like a oh, stare yeah. down, like an athlete would give another athlete. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's like she just dunked on me and she's like, trying to intimidate me i'm like she's no, like alan look. iverson stepping over your dead body or what? Like, <laughs> yeah, like, i'm like um back the line lady I'm here first. Lou, is that what you're telling me yeah tyron <laughs> I, would I would say i would say i'm more of a tyron Lou kind of athlete yeah <laughs> i would let i would let lebron james tell me what to do <laughs> that's not hard does, Tyr- yeah, does tyron Lou not have a does he not have a championship as a coach because lebron james coached his team for him well, i was gonna say yeah yeah lebron Go ahead, run the team. Give me the that ring. The ring shines the same, all right? So I don't care. Exactly. I wouldn't give a shit. 
Well, that's like that um was the guy from Gonzaga Morrison? Adam no. Morrison? He's got like two or three rings. Does he? Yeah. yeah. He hasn't done shit. Yeah, he was on the Lakers. What? <laughs> oh right. With the, he's with the Kobe Lakers. Yeah. What? R.I.P. Kobe. Wow. Well, R.I.P. Yeah. I mean, wow. it goes without saying. But so I I going through this situation, it brought to my mind because we originally we had asked Matt, hey Matt, knocked out of the park last week with the two questions to set up conversations. Matt. Give us another one. What Jordan, do you remember what Matt said in the group chat, what his option would be? We talked about this in the group chat. Oh, for Christ's sake. Listen, listen, <laughs> you guys know I've had a big week, okay? I got glasses, and I have to move. So I can see, and I have to change my entire what? life for two weeks. So I, I've, I, you guys have been talking in the group chat about the podcast, and I've been reading everything. And unless I completely disagree with something, no, 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 time out. Two things have happened in the group chat. One, you've talked about the podcast, and if I disagree, I will I will say something, but I haven't. And two, you guys have dunked on me repeatedly for my poor draft performances, and I frankly don't have a leg to stand on, so I just took that one as a chops, too. So, um, as you should as, have. As I should have, yeah. So, again, self-reflecting. I've been terrible at drafting. I made some changes to my preparation. Um, all right, in the, pa the past podcast, so hopefully it goes well, the Tuesday podcast that just went, I made changes to my preparation, and I'm hoping, you know, that pays dividends. But as you guys know, this week um, has been a shit show, so I'm working on it. All right, so I'll go to James, North End James. Do yeah. you remember when that's, do you remember what Matt's option for us was? Uh, how to eat a wing? Was yeah, a, I feel like this podcast, we're pretty good at like stretching things out and making things relevant and really talking about them. But for Matt to say the proper way to eat chicken wings, I was like, I don't know, man, we're good. We're not that good. This is because there is a proper way to eat chicken wings and everybody does it wrong. If you but take you chicken wings. For speed or, okay, so you're probably talking about the nubs, not the wing, right? Like, or not the, the. Talking no, about the the flat. Sorry, the flat. You're talking about the flat, not the drum. I'm talking. I'm talking about your casually eating wings. You're not eating for speed. Eating for speed, you're just shoveling. But if you're just casually eating wings, you have to one hand that shit because you don't want to get your beer glass dirty too. No, no. But there's no. an art to that. There, there is an art to that, and it's yeah. holding your glass like this. Great podcast, James. No. Oh yeah. Well, that. you can't see it. So <laughs> you take your thumb, using his thumb, take your thumb and, and, his and your ring, ring finger. finger. And, and squeezing it, it like together that. like a fucking crab. But see, if you eat with one hand, you can use all the fingers to eat the wing. Do you guys do the smush and pull? I'm a big smush and pull person with flats. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm a I'm a twist. I'll I'll twist it. To oh the, wow, to, Matt to James is really a two hand person. If you oh, he's a two hander. I twist it, break the cartilage down, and then I pop the leg out, and then I just whoop, it comes You're out. You haven't like taken a bite just, yet. Holy no, shit! No, James. but but it's a whole science to it. So you pop it, and then you can split the wing. You pull the two bones apart and you just go. No, like you just literally grab the end. You push the other end into the plate to where it splinters, and then you just take that whole thing, pull it, put it in your mouth, and pull. Done. So I think I think um, we're all accomplishing the same thing here. Hey Pat, hey Pat, just for the record, mm -hmm. just for the record. We, yeah, we just told you we could talk about it. <laughs> uh, but to jump in on that. Uh, I don't have this issue that you guys have. Um, me and Alex Smith, the the former quarterback of the NFL, have uh, one thing in common. We are both called old small hands. Um, so I just pick up a chicken wing, and it's like an or it's like I'm picking up an oral piece of chicken. My hands are so small. I, can I really thought you were going to say that you're both weak in the legs. But yeah, I thought you were going to say Pat's legs were made of Pat's legs are made of putty. <laughs> I'm a Gagne, so that's just a given. Like we just hold have on, these whoa. tiny legs. Stop. Made of what, Jordan? Putty. Oh, I heard putty. I was like, if that's how you pronounce putty, if that's how you pronounce putty. I should have said putting. You have a that's, Toronto man. Full, that's Toronto man speaking. Yeah, yeah, full, disclosure. Putty, huh? <laughs> full disclosure, I thought he said pudding, so I mean, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so back to my question now. I, I cut line cutters. So I'm, I want to ask everybody, I'll start with Jordan. What's one thing in your life that bothers you that really shouldn't? Wow. Uh, you want this me to is a tough one to start, to start with Jordan. one thing. <laughs> yeah, with Jordan, um, it's going to be tough. It changes every day. So <laughs> I'm going to stick with, um, I'm just going to go, I'm trying to, I'm really trying to break this down now. Um, I'm going to go with just the, the current Canadian housing market. I don't know. Or maybe I should be mad about that. Should I, yeah. I feel like I should be mad about that. You should be mad about that. I know. I'm trying to think of like a little thing, but I feel like my 
my life's been so stuck with big things that, um, you know, you know what? Fuck it. You know what? Here, I'll just say it. Um, I'm, I'm upset at how much I couldn't see the last five years of my life. <laughs> uh, I've been living the last five years of my life, according to my um, optometrist. Uh, he said I should have been in the, uh, the office five years ago. I've just come to realize I've led my whole life in standard definition. Like, <laughs> I, I got glasses, and it was like, you know those videos where, like, a kid can hear for the first time due to, like, a fancy hearing aid? Like, that's how I felt. I was like, I was like in Superstore staring at like, wow, I never knew the Halls bags were that color. You know, like I could see depth um, in, in stuff, like stuff had distances. Um, uh, it's just, it was just a crazy world, honestly, altogether. So that's maybe, I don't know if that's a great answer to your question. I feel like I've been underwater the last little bit, but that's how I feel. I just can't get over how like... I'm detailed things are now in my life with with the with the amount i saw i look back on your pictures of you squinting i think that's a great answer yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah all right matt one thing in your life that bothers you that shouldn't okay so i i was think i've been thinking about this since you you asked us to think of something so like a couple hours and um uh with slow pitch season coming uh i i came to the conclusion that thing that bothers me the most that probably shouldn't is people who show up with a glove and shoes in their hand. <laughs> I don't know. It, eh? That's it. I, I I don't know why that, but like, put it in a bag. Like, try. Have you try, seen the people least. that do it in like a like a grocery bag? Like like your plastic, your standard at least, plastic at, bag. At least they had the the wherewithal to put it in a bag. <laughs> like they're not walking in with a pair of shoes in one hand and a glove in the other, and they're like, "I'm here to play baseball." Like, no. No, that shouldn't, it, it shouldn't bother me, but I, if I see, if you get a spare and they show up, shoes in one hand, glove in the other, I'm like, Ain't no. Ain't winning that game. No. Not winning that game. No, you're like, no, we'll play short. Just the best, the best part of that is it's never cleats. It's always like just a standard pair of runners. Like, you didn't want to get those just, dirty on the way there? Like, <laughs> I just, I just picture, I picture them walking up to the diamond, glove in one hand, shoes in the other, and in their head they're just going, "All right, guys, let's 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 baseball." Yeah, probably wearing a polo. Like they don't oh. know, how, they don't even know what shirt to wear. My favorite oh. thing of uh, running shoes guy is the way they run the bases, where it's like they're, um, like they do the arm swing, like trying not to fall. Yeah. Yeah, my it's. I honestly would let that guy stay. In fact, I think baseball would be way more entertaining if we made everyone play with running shoes because running. people would be slipping and sliding everywhere, and I think that would make it a lot more fun. Replace the DH with about the, deep... the designated scrub. Yes. <laughs> yes. You want to talk about a deep pull right now? When Jordan says that, them sliding on the base paths. Do you guys ever? Did you guys ever see the Magic School Bus episode where they played baseball with no friction on the field? No, hard. no. Oh. That's that's what I think of every time I see a guy in running shoes running around the bases. I know what I'm watching before bed tonight. <laughs> like you gotta look it up; it's hilarious. But how do you transition that back out of that one, Pat? What a I, random uh, aside. <laughs> we move on to James. James, tell me something that bothers you that shouldn't. Uh, this is probably like oh, this is a work thing for sure. Um, at oh. work, we have the coffee makers um, that are the industrial ones that you know you pull it out and you just put the filter in you. You take the standard bag of grinds and you put it in, and you put it in, right? Yeah, it's measured. It's pre-measured. Yeah. Everything. It's it's real simple, and you just put it back in, hit start, and it fills the carafe. At work, I feel like I'm the only person who fucking does it, and it drives me absolutely bonkers <laughs> because I drink coffee more than anybody else, and I and it, it it happens every time. You know, at least once a day, I'll go and I'm like, well, I got to get my coffee because I just had a shitty phone call. And I'm going to go get a coffee. I get there. None of it's ready. Nobody's even hit start on the fucking thing. And it's like, Durr! like, come on. Like, it makes you want to kill someone, not go postal at work. You know, I would never do that. Uh, respectful workplace, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, you, you push just, a man. You're pushing a man. I just envision James in, a, in the off, in the break room by himself, looking at the coffee maker. He just hands up, turns around, like, no one's around. He just goes, what the fuck? Yeah, like, it's happened. It's actually happened. It, and I always I always think are back Are you the to, only person drinking the, the office coffee? Like, is well, everyone Bison, going to, like, It's, it's called Bison and Brew, and it'll definitely put hair on your chest. Um, it's not great coffee, but it's yeah, free. Yeah, I was going to say. And I like free. But it's free, and I like free. Oh, no, that's, that's not a good game for you, folks. Well, hey, but it reminds me of those old Terry Tate commercials. 
Oh, oh, you kill the joke, Pat, you make some money. That's mo, a good poll. Right? That's a good poll. Yeah, that's but you know what? People are going to listen to this. They're going to listen to this and they're going to go on the computer and look up Magic School Bus No Friction Baseball Field. So. No, they're not because they're all going to look up Terry Tate now because that's the quality. <laughs> that's the quality content we need. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Um, I'll do mine quick because it's I, a little ridiculous. Hold on. No, I'm still. You had to ask this question. I'm very upset now. I'm thinking of all the people that walk in with gloves and shoes and I'm like, <laughs> I can't get over it right now. I'm very upset. How about the guy who plays a whole season on your team with gloves and shoes? Oh, oh that, he would never play on my team. Every team has had that guy. Who, that's, no. yeah, how every funny is it when that guy, guy, how funny is it when that guy hits like that clutch hit that you need in the playoffs? Oh. And you're, oh. he gets up to bat, you're like, well, we're toast. This is it. We're going James, home with no t shirts. We had a guy on our <laughs> slow pitch team, uh, Colin. Uh, I won't say his last name, but he was the, that guy. He'd come up with shoes in his glove, and you'd be like, oh, fuck, here we go. And then he's like our pitcher and was one of our most consistent hitters for a while. So, like, the, you never know. The be- the best part is, though, those people that walk up with shoes in a glove, they're always, like, so upbeat and they have really good energy. And then the game's over, and they're horrible. Like, horrible awful is more I would say it. And they're like, hey, you know, anytime you guys need players, just let me know. Dude, we yeah. are never calling you again. <laughs> no, <laughs> you were good. bottom of the barrel. We were they never calling you They always come with a different bat. So, or no, they never come with a bat. So, like, they try out everyone's bat. That's yeah, they like, use a different bat. At they bat. use a different bat every time. Is it? Is this bat good? Is this bat yeah. good? Yeah, it's oh, the best good. line I've ever heard from a spare who comes in with a glove and just shoes. And he goes, so which one of these hits home runs? Okay, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> that none of them. You. Literally none Sorry, of them with you. Oh, no, that's great. Uh, yeah, so one thing that bothers me that shouldn't, um, you know those cup holders from restaurants? Namely, McDonald's that you could put all four cups in. Yeah, the oh. fact that those still exist and the noise I, they make and how I'm I don't, I can't, of them. I can't touch them. I, I have a phobia of those cup holder trays. Like a tray? Oh, you yeah. can't stand the tray. Like a no, drink, I can't, I can't tray. touch it. Yeah. Fun fact them. about uh, McDonald's drink trays: don't leave them in your car for too long. They actually omit a horrendous odor. In yeah, because the they're side. they're biodegradable. There you go, James. Oh, get on my they? get on my team, man. Let's yeah. Let's I'm, pretty, I'm almost 100 percent sure they're made to be biodegradable. They are, and whatever smell. If you leave them in your car in the middle of August, like in the dog days of August, oh. Uh, uh, James, how, how much have you? How many times have you left a McDonald's thing in storage, aka your trunk? Uh, <laughs> nah, it's, a, it's a it's a monthly thing for sure. I mean, yeah. it's, and I usually James is always like, couple. "Okay, let me go to my locker," and he opens the trunk in his car, and everything is in there. Yeah, it's, it's always incredible. got ball gear, football gear, so it's ready to everything go. Everything you ever need is in the but, trunk of James's but car. But James's ball gear is in a bag. <laughs> yeah, backpack. Yeah. It's in a backpack. Yo, James shows up like shows up with a backpack in the trunk, opens it, and then just takes out his gloves and running shoes, and then walks to the diamond and leaves his ball bag. <laughs> I'm gonna do that from now on. That'd be super oh, funny. Big fake. No. No. <laughs> No, but then he's Matt, a hero. Then he's like, where'd you spare? find this guy? Matt, if you ever ask me to spare for your team, I'm literally leaving my bat and my shoes. Like, I will leave everything except my shittiest glove and my worst pair of running shoes. I will get, I, you will see a physically angry human being. <laughs> like, yeah, where'd you get this guy? Shoes, why why, why, why we call this guy? Why we call this guy? Then I'll go back and get it. I love oh, that. Man. Oh, that's good. Oh, all right. Hey, Matt, uh, did, did I tell you that I went golfing with the old man this weekend? Uh, no, uh, I guess my invite got lost in the mail, but well, to be fair, we only need one person. He didn't call yeah. you first, though, so that's I mean, that's wait, who called who? Time out. Who called who? My dad called me. Oh, never calls oh. me first. And actually, yes. uh, fun story I knew you went golfing with him, and I knew he went golfing and talking to mom on sa- Friday, and she's like, Yeah, dad's going golfing on Saturday. I'm like, What the fuck? He was supposed to, I thought we were gonna get together. We're going to grab the power rig from his buddy and we're going to power rig my incredibly large yard that uh, I started power uh, or started raking by hand. And I was like, no, this is dumb. So, you know what I did? You know what I did uh, just to be spiteful towards my father? What's that? I raked the whole yard in two hours by hand. Fuck him. (laughs) Hear that, Mike Gunny? I did it by myself because you went golfing. What's a power rig? It's like a, it's like a gas powered rake. Really? Yeah. Oh, cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need one of those. No, 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 no. Well, my dad will just come by with his buddy and they'll do it. Well, yeah, because I apparently I matter. Like, he won't for Matt. But <laughs> but you're talking about the one that punches holes in your... Yeah. No, 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 that's an area. No, that's an area. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm mixing those up. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, wow. Um, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, I'm like, even I know what an air raid is. There's a power rake, yeah. yeah. It makes the, real it, it, it's the number one um, reason you mix up uh, stepping on goose poop is because you're not sure if the little yep. dirt digouts are goose poop or not. It's very confusing. I'm proud of you, Jordan. I'm proud of you. Yeah, I'm learning. I'm learning a lot. I'm broke now because of <laughs> but I'm learning. I bought a lawnmower and I'm, it's going to be great. Uh, what kind of lawnmower do you buy? It's a gas. It's a gas lawnmower because my backyard is bigger than you guys think. It's it's about the same size as Matt's, nice. um, which is not what I was looking for, but that's what we got. So, can you take a video of yourself trying to put that lawnmower together, please? No, no. Okay, hold on. Time out. I am really good at because I'm particular. I'm very good at following instructions and putting things together. That is a strength of mine. Yeah. Now, operating and maintaining that gas lawnmower. Maintaining. Um, just yeah. use it for eight years till it dies. Well, no, because I was trying to figure out which lawnmower um, comes, like, which um, company, because I'm assuming it's, like, my car, right? Like, does the lawnmower company come to my house and pick up the lawnmower and leave me another lawnmower to no. use in the interim no. and then bring back the lawnmower? No. No? Is there... Is, is there a five-year, 100,000-step warranty on my lawnmower? That would be uh, something to sell, though. <laughs> there there are usually warranties, but not It's a, three, like it's a three-year warranty. I also got the one that mulches, side blows, or has the bag. So you, you, got, a not going... so you got a standard lawnmower. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a lawnmower. Like, what? A standard lawnmower? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was mid-range at Home Depot. I also got a trimmer. Uh, and that you're blower. never going to use. Yes, you trim the edge. Yeah, you trim the edge of your uh, the edge of your yard. He means sure. he means a weed whacker. Yeah, I was gonna say is that a fucking weed. My whacker? dad calls it a trimmer. Okay, sorry that the Jamaicans call it a trimmer, right? Whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa! Sorry, guys. Sorry that we have that? different things. Sorry we say different things in my culture. Okay, Jesus Christ. Uh, you went golfing with dad. Go. So sorry. I love that aside though. That was great. Uh, so Matt, this is an all-time dad dad golf moment. Okay, so you you know for sure what he he packed a lunch. What do you think he brought? Peanuts, sandwich. yeah, a sandwich, yeah, and Gatorade or like no, no, no like Kool Aid or Tang. Can we guess the sandwich? Yeah, ham and cheese. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, a sandwich, which he ate in the car ride on the way to the to the golf, <laughs> which, which was at like eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, and then he had a bag of peanuts and a bag of almonds. Oh, we had both. Yeah, and then before we even teed off, he goes, "Hey, take a swig of this." I'm like, COVID, but whatever. And I take a swig of his, his water bottle thinking I'm going to have, there's going to be boost. And I'm like, sweet. What is this dad? Pre-workout. I'm like, you want your heart beating out of your chest while you golf? Okay. You know where you got this pre-workout? <laughs> he put pre-workout in his Gatorade? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. No, He like mixed it up. Like he has. Oh he my God. I was going to say that's the hardest thing I've ever heard is putting pre-workout in Gatorade. So my parents watch my kids three times a week. So I get a call from my dad and he's like, Hey, do you have pre-workout? Because like he wanted to work out my basement. I was like, no. He's like, we should get some and split it. I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> so I order some pre-workout. I text him. It's like the middle of the day. I'm like, uh, what, what flavor do you want? Like blue raspberry? He goes, ooh, blue raspberry. Yummy. So I got this for us. I split it. And then he, he calls me. He's like, hey, have you used that pre-workout yet? I was like, no, man. I haven't used it. He goes, oh, it's some good shit. I'm like, what, oh, What'd good. you get? Oh, I don't know. So I, I ordered from this website called uh, Canadian Protein. Whoa, 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 whoa. Web, web, no boom. free ads. Yes. No free ads. But uh, yeah, he, uh, I, I use it too. It, it's pretty good shit. Well, I mean, would you use it to golf? I mean, obviously, the, the high octane <laughs> that, sport. That's, that's the issue here is I think he might be u- overusing it. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so he did that. So this was like at all time. So we went to La Brokery. Shout out La Brokery. Their golf course. Great golf course. Um, at the, I think it was the third hole. He is like, I got to use my five iron goes in his bag. He's like, Pat, what'd you do with my five iron? First of all, what would I do with his oh, five? I iron? know this. Yeah. He doesn't have his five iron. I'm like, it's been two holes. You didn't even use your five iron yet. How'd you lose it? He goes, it's not in my bag. So he was like mentally not in it for two holes. Cause he was wondering where it was. So he like tripled and doubled the next two holes, which was amazing. And then the best part about the brokery is that this year, they changed the layout of the course, so the back nine is now the front nine, and the front nine is now the back nine. Matt, he mentioned this at least ten times during the round. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like, about right. It's crazy. Last time I was here, we did it backwards. We did it the other way. It's crazy. I'm like, yeah, that's yeah, that's. 
Like just blown away by the whole situation. Like <laughs> couldn't nothing. fathom how a golf course could do that. It's crazy. Yeah. And then uh, my uncle, my I went with my uncle, and he actually texted us and told us he found a tick on him, which terrified. I'm terrified of ticks. I don't oh, want no. anything to do with them. Probably Why ticked him off. Such a weirdo. Uh, it's just a tick. No, it gives you Lyme disease, man. Check. Check your check your warm orifices and you'll be fine. <laughs> wait, wait. You're worried about Lyme disease with what's going on in the world? <laughs> yes. Lyme disease is going to put me out of commission. I will say I am more worried about Lyme disease than COVID. I will say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So he's like, check check yourself out. And I'm like, first of all, no. Because like our my father and all his friends, uncle included, they love going to look for golf balls in the bush. And then they wonder why they get ticks. <laughs> When I lose a golf ball in the bush, I'm not going to look for it. It's gone. That's my number one reason I hate golfing, actually. Um, and there's like a high top three. Well, number the, one is you you suck at it. So no, I don't even hate it because I no, I'm well aware I suck at it, and I go just so that someone like people can have a fourth. But no, I I hate with a passion people who spend way too long looking for their golf balls. Like be like me, buy a 12 pack and just assume that all 12 are going to get lost in the 18 holes if you're having a good day. So if I hit one in the bush and I don't see it after 30 seconds, okay, I'm moving on. Gone forever. Gone forever. Or it's gone. be like me and I don't look for golf balls. Pat, what do I do? He just pops another one out of his pocket. No, no, I, just, <laughs> I, I don't look for golf balls. I just find golf balls. Uh, that's true, yeah. And that's always yeah. up. He loses the most golf balls. Everybody finds the most. It's, it's insane. I am incredible at spotting golf balls in the bush. Well, maybe I can see them now because maybe before I just couldn't see Maybe that was your see. problem, Jordan. Yeah. yeah, maybe that's why you're bad at golf because you couldn't see. I couldn't see. No, no that can't be it. Can't see shit. Uh, yeah, no, like love going golfing with my dad. He's like, it's it's a good story every time. And he's always like impressed with every golf course. And he never knows where he's going. So, so he's like, where do we go next? Let's just follow the golf, the cart path, Dad. It's okay. And he's like, he was just this side. way to hole 10. That's where yeah. you're going. <laughs> where are you going that way? Are you going the right way? Yeah, I'm going the right way. Now. Okay, good. <laughs> just making sure. He's always checking on me too, it's, which is the best. He's does he always want to make sure, does he make sure you look both ways when you're crossing the inevitable main street that every golf course makes you cross? I'm always going too fast. I'm always going too fast. I was just going to say, is he one of those guys that when you're driving the cart, he's like, ooh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Go a little faster to this turn. Easy on the battery power there, Patrick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was fun times. All right. So I I think it's time we could uh, talk a little beer. James seems to be enjoying his, uh, his beer. He had a nice bottle, so I'm curious. James, lead us off tonight. What are you drinking? Oh, I'm very excited for this, actually. Um, I grabbed myself the Old Fashioned uh, from Vessel. It is one of their cocktail-inspired strong beers. Um. As you've probably heard on a, on the previous episodes, that I do like the brown stuff, mostly bourbon. Um, and I don't like that you call it that. Was yeah, that I, I don't like that you call it that. What the brown stuff? Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, that could mean something else. Oh, whatever. Um, anyways, key ingredient to an old fashioned is bourbon. Um, so I was very excited when I saw this. Uh, grabbed it right away, and to be honest, this is, you know. As a cocktail beer, very good. Uh, I'm a huge fan of this. Um, to me, this is sessionable, and I think it does justice to the old-fashioned cocktail. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, like, I mean, it is smooth drinking. It's 7%. Um, it's got good flavor to it. Not a bitter finish. Um, it, it's good. And I could see myself drinking this over and over again and having a really good night around it. Um I was uh, first couple sips in, very excited about it, very happy about it. Um, I'm gonna have to give it. I'm gonna be quick with the review because there's not much to say about it. it, it it's it's just a good beer. I, if you if you like bourbon, if you like old fashions, go out, go get it while you can. Um, but as for my score, I'm gonna give it a four point five. Whoa! Whoa! I, yeah. What so I, I've had that beer. I've had that beer and. I'm not a big bourbon guy. I'm not a big, like, old-fashioned. Yeah. But I have had an old-fashioned, and it is very true to it. Yeah. And as someone in yourself who enjoys that, enjoys old-fashioned, enjoys bourbon, I think it does do it justice, and I, I can understand and respect your score based yeah, on that. I, I think my score more reflects um, how close it is between, you know, the cocktail and beer. I like mm. beer. I like cocktails. 
let's put them together. And this is this is the first cocktail beer where I was like, yeah, give, give me more of this. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, four point five. Wow. Good for you, James. All right, Jordan. You know, how about you go next? What you All right. Tonight? I will go next. Uh, I was actually in the middle of buying beer. So Pat, thank you for <laughs> throwing it to me. So. The launch of Good Neighbor is mm. what I'm going to be reviewing today. This is going to be the Hazy Pale Ale with uh, Cryo Uquanot, Cryo Azaka, and Galaxy Hops. So they're starting off really easy for me to understand. It's a juicy double dry hop New England style pale ale with bright tropical hop notes of passion fruit, mango, papaya, peach, and tangerine. So this is a beer um, that when I, on the nose, I expected a pretty hop forward beer and it's not that at all this is going to be like heavily forward on the haze and in my opinion the ale um i mean i know it's a pale ale but i find with a lot of hazy pale ales you still kind of get like a a little less hops than an ipa but like you still get hit with it and this really doesn't have it so what you have here is like a very easy drinking introductory hazy pale ale in my opinion extremely sessionable extremely consumable um, and really quite good. Uh, Matt, talk through this sip, please. Uh, so Good Neighbor actually prides themselves in producing more sessionable, low ABV beers. Oh, interesting. Okay. They know that. Matt, I'm glad you brought that up <laughs> because you found my one issue. <laughs> I knew that was going to be your issue. Yeah. This, this should – no, no, no. This is, score is still going to be very good because the only thing, in my opinion, that if this beer was 6%, it would be in the fours easy. Easy. Wow, okay. That's how delicious. That's how much I find this to be like easy to drink and fun to drink. However, the four point the four percent, it just it has to be one of the best things I've ever had to get up in the fours if it's in the four percent range, even in the five percent range. So I'm gonna give this a three point seven five. A very good score. I think it's something everyone should try, not just to drink local, but because it is quite good. And I really like what they did with this from a Hayes perspective. Um, but in my other opinion, I mean, I want a little more punch for how much we're paying for the craft beer. Um, however, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll kind of wrap it up. I feel like I'm just going back and forth between the two statements, but give me some more ABV. But if that's not exactly what you need, you're going to be very happy with this. So, Matt, over to you. Uh, thanks, Jordan. Um, before I uh, proceed to my review for this week, I just want to shout out uh, uh, Lake of the Woods, Manitoba. Uh they actually commented on our Facebook, thanked us for the review, or not Facebook, Instagram. Thanked Facebook. us for the review. I was going to say, and I was like, if we have a Facebook, we're going to I, make I uh, drank two stuff. more sneaky peaches this weekend, and uh, I, I believe that might be my summer beer of choice this year. That's cool. Love it. But uh, today, I went back to Torque. Uh, Torque put out two, so when Torque does like limited releases, like their, their black can with like a temporary label kind of deal. They produce a crap ton and like ship them off to the LCs. And they're like, these are small batches. It's like, no, they're not. They're in the LC. Like nobody puts them. But I picked up the Ramsey Maybach. Um, I think I'm pronouncing that right. But Maybach. 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 Is it Maybach? Oh, like the car? It's for sure a Maybach. It's a, a for sure a Bach. Anyways, <laughs> um, I've, I actually, I really enjoy the Doppelbach, the, the Bach style. Uh, this has those characteristics. It's a little caramelly. It's kind of rich tasting, like malt forward, a little sweet. Um, this one's a little on the lighter side than uh, some of the other ones I've had. Still a high BV. We're talking to 8% here. So it's one of those ones that makes you feel a little warm inside, which uh, I'm always down for. Um, I found it a little thin, a little bit thin. And that would be my one critique of it. Uh, some of the my box are a little bit thicker, um, but still sessionable. This one's sessionable, but I found it a little thin, a little watery, but it's not watery. Watery is just how I would describe it. It's not necessarily how I, it had flavor is what I'm, I'm trying to get at. So if you follow me on a tap at Gunny Matt, um, it's going to get a decent score. It's something I would, I would grab again, uh, something I'm not going to run to the LC and grab again. But I would get it. Uh, so I'm going to give it a 3.5. Uh, Torque has Very been nice. putting out a lot of good stuff. Uh, I know a lot of people that I talk to are like, ah, Torque's okay. Torque's good. I'm a big Torque fan. I, I find a lot of the stuff they put out is is different and, and good and flavorful. 
And yeah, just keep doing your thing. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll add quickly to the torque thing there. Um, torque and Fort Gary, I think because they were kind of first to the craft beer scene in Winnipeg, they kind of, they kind of get forgotten about. Right. Yeah. And, it, and people seem to think that all the newer brands are better, but I mean, yeah, I agree. They, they put out some quality stuff. I agree with what you say. Like half pints kind of gets people who love half pints, love half pints. And it, I mean, half pints is one of the older craft breweries in the city, but Torque was one of the, the new wave of craft yeah. breweries, but they were bigger. Yeah. And yeah, like you said, they kind of get like almost forgotten about, but forgotten about I don't that. think they should. And they're also super far from where I live. So, I mean, Make it free delivery if I spend a hundred dollars. Come on, Tor. <laughs> oh no, I, I agree with that. There should be free delivery over a certain amount because I would definitely do it. All right, I'll finish it out. Uh, I uh, picked up the new release from the Nonsuch, uh, the Alloway Ale, which is in conjunction with the Winnipeg Foundation. Uh, William Forbes Alloway was actually the founder of the Winnipeg Foundation, so they put out a beer to commemorate their one hundredth anniversary. Wow! Um, so it's a it's a pale ale. Uh, on the can, it says they're looking for a clean, crisp, refreshing pale ale. Check, check, check. This is delicious. It is simple, but effective. I enjoyed every second of this beer. I would buy, I'm sad I bought one. I wish I would have bought five. And so I just have them in my fridge when I want to go back to the Old Faithful. I really enjoyed this. This is a great one to, to send out. Congratulations to the Winnipeg Foundation. Very simple. I'm going to give this a 3.5 on Untapped. And uh, yeah, that's how I'm going to work it. And then a quick review, uh, quick, quick review at JSCO 55 had the good neighbor, hazy pale ale. He gave it a 3.75 uh, at JC sizzle. Christ. Uh, <laughs> the old fashioned from vessel. He gave it a 4.5 uh, at Gagne and Matt with two T's. I believe I uh, had the Ramsey, my from Torquay gave it a 3.5 and myself at Pat Gagne had the Alloway ale from nonsuch. I gave it a 3.5 on untapped. And we will now throw it to Jordan for the Winnipeg Beer News of the Week. Thank you, Patrick. All right, so Pat mentioned Nonsuch Beer has the Alloway Ale. Talked a little bit about how founded in 1921, the beer is named after businessman, banker, and philanthropist William Alloway. So give that a try, a clean, crisp, pale ale. Further than that, the beer can, just hold as on, a reminder. The what, um, is, Oh. The beer can? Oh, the beer can. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, the beer can uh, is going to be opening up soon across from it the... It opened... Bridge. Oh, it's already it opened, up, right? It opened uh, last weekend. Right, right. Thank you, yeah. Pat. All right, so that's open. So head down there and make sure you have a drink. Uh, Trans Canada Beer came out with a small batch of pale ale with quinoa. Yes, quinoa. <laughs> um and apparently this beer is brewed with mosaic hops and a portion of quinoa, which gives it altogether notes of peach, stone fruit, and passion fruit. So, sure. Sure. Uh, <laughs> good neighbor. We mentioned that they were open. Um, the little thing here, their milkshake kettle sour. Boy, did they not make enough. Um, to <laughs> I think I heard they sent two flats, not even pilots, like two flats to the queue, and it was gone in like a blink. So... Um, good start, but yeah, let's make sure, you know, you have enough for people who don't go like the first second it's open. Um, cause I couldn't get Jordan, Jordan, you sound like a bitter bitch right now. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't happy about this, but <laughs> um, it looks like Bikey McBikeface is making a return Saturday, May 1st at, May 1st at 11 a.m. In addition, Barnhammer is coming out with Chris's Oat Pale Ale by coming out with, I made this already out. Um, citrus and melon aromas of a zippy little pale ale. Kind of light on the APV, but it would probably be a nice casual drink. Uh, Sucrose has launched Laugh Track, which is a new pale ale. It's brewed with Southern Passion Hops from South Africa, as well as Cascade Hops. So they're basically saying it'll have some subtle passion fruit, some citrus, and some berry flavors. That should be very interesting. Oh, can't wait. Torque has come out with a new beer as well, the Intergalactic Sabrotage, which is an oat cream New England IPA. Um, if there's one thing I can say, the picture looks incredible. The color looks so nice, so give that a run. Uncle George will be back in cans next week, along with a new beer again from Torque, a rye IPA at 6.5%. And finally, the best news of the week, Kilter is coming out with a juicy hot sauce. 
Um, is it beer news related to directly to beer? No. Does it combine two of my favorite things I love in the world, which is hot sauce and beer? Yes, it does. So can't wait was, to give that a try. It was so great that James posted it a second time. I'm excited. Oh, so good. I'm excited. Next Jordan understands that I like hot sauce just as much as Jordan does. The best so. part about this is when Kelter makes you have that $20 minimum for delivery, this will be a great add-on so that you don't have to buy more beers than you want, you know, because they always mark the beers at like $4.95 and then you get four of them and it's like $19.80 your total. You need one more beer. Nay, nay. Just give me a hot sauce. <laughs> right, bam. Now you can just come to my door and deliver me my beer. So, that is the end of the beer news this week. Pat, back to you. All right. So uh, I hope everybody enjoyed uh, some beer review Thursday. Uh, everybody enjoy your weekend. Drink local. Support local. Have some good beers. Go to the beer can. Enjoy yourself. Sort of. Kind of. Because you can only go with like three other people. I don't know the rules are anymore. Fuck. All right. So we'll see you next week. And uh, we'll see you next week on Tuesday for another Flight in a Pint with Bros, Bumps, and Beers.